So today we're going to be talking about optic tract syndrome. So the optic pathway, as you know, starts in the eyeballs and then crosses in the chiasm. The nasal fiber crosses, but the temporal fiber remains uncrossed. And so the optic tract is a combination of the crossing fiber from one eye and the uncrossed temporal fiber from the fellow eye. And that travels to the geniculate body and then from the radiations to the occipital cortex. But today we're only going to be talking about the optic tract. So as you know, any lesion behind the body of the chiasm produces a visual field defect that is a homonymous hemianopsia. And so in a patient who has a right homonymous hemianopsia, that would implicate the left retrochiasmal pathway. And so when you have a homonymous hemianopsia, especially when it's incongruous, we know that we are further forward in the retrochiasmal pathway. And because it's a right homonymous hemianopsia, we're worried about a left retrochiasmal lesion. So now what we're trying to do with the optic tract syndrome is figure out, is, are we in the radiations, the cortex, or the geniculate body, or the optic tract? And the two features that would help us determine whether we are in the tract are number one, because the lateral geniculate body is where the axon is heading to synapse, any lesion in front of the geniculate body will cause us optic atrophy. And so the special form of optic atrophy that we're looking for in patients who have optic tract lesions is correlated to the homonymous hemianopsia. So in the retina, this is the optic nerve, the fovea, the temporal fiber, in this case a superior temporal fiber, doesn't go straight into the optic nerve. It goes all the way around the fovea and inserts into the top of the disc. So these fibers insert to the top of the disc. The inferior temporal fibers, likewise, go all the way around the fovea and insert into the bottom of the disc. And because this fovea is the center of the eye, anything on this side of the fovea is actually temporal, and everything on this side is nasal. And so what that means practically is this papillomacular bundle and these nasal fibers are both nasal. So if we look at an optic nerve, the top is temporal fiber, the bottom is temporal fiber, this is papillomacular bundle, but nasal, and this is also nasal. So T, T, N, N, this is the fiber distribution of the optic nerve based on this nerve fiber layer distribution inserting into the optic nerve. So with a patient who has a right homonymous hemianopsia, the right eye has the temporal field loss and the left eye has nasal field loss. In the eye with the temporal field defect, that's gonna be nasal fiber loss. So the temporal field is coming from the right eye which is the nasal fiber. So in the right eye, the atrophy will involve the nasal fibers and that is a bow tie or a band of atrophy across the right optic nerve in an optic tract lesion. Likewise, in the left eye, which has the nasal field defect, the nasal field defect in the left eye is going to affect the temporal fiber in the left eye and so it'll be the reverse pattern of atrophy. The temporal fiber will be out. In addition, because the tract carries the pupil fiber to the Eddinger-Westphal nucleus in the midbrain, that pretectal nucleus is an afferent fiber. And so we might get an RAPD, a relative afferent pupillary defect, if we have a tract lesion, because the pupil fiber is in front of the geniculate body. So if we have a, a right homonymous hemianopsia, because the temporal field is bigger than the nasal field, usually the RAPD in a tract lesion is going to be in the eye that has the temporal field defect, and that came from the nasal fiber, which came from the contralateral eye. So in this particular example, there would be a right relative afferent pupillary defect because the temporal visual field is bigger than the nasal visual field. So these comprise the three key elements of the optic tract syndrome. A homonymous hemianopsia on the contralateral side that tends to be incongruous. There's gonna be an associated relative afferent pupillary defect because we have a defect in the pupil pathway on the afferent side. And because it's relative to the fellow eye, the eye with the temporal field defect has bigger field loss. That's the nasal fiber, which is coming from the contralateral eye. 
and in this example, a right relative afferent pupillary defect. In addition, there's going to be band atrophy. That atrophy band across the optic nerve is the nasal fiber, which also represents the temporal field, which in this example, in the right homonymous hemidopsia is the right eye. So if we have a RAPD, band atrophy, and a homonymous hemianopsia, you should be thinking the optic tract syndrome.